Hello, it's Darren at Moonhair Studio here, and I've had a little time to play with the new control panel on the QCOM Pro X. So what do I think about it? And what did I miss out on my original review? So for those of you that saw my previous video on an overview of the new QCOM Pro X panel, you may have noticed a comment that came through from Henry um, telling me about some functionality I'd missed out on that particular overview. Thanks, Henry. Let's just take a look at what you're talking about here. Now, if you haven't already done so, I'd advise you taking a look at my previous video on mixer configurations and how they can help you with your QCOM Pro X. But what Henry's talking about here is some functionality that is now available from the front panel. I said that the layer two button only controls the marker track. So you click layer two and then you can add a marker. You've got to click that off if you want to go between markers backwards and forwards. But in fact, layer two also controls these function buttons in a very specific way. So I really don't want to go into a complete uh, repeat of that particular video, but just to tell you that Cubase users, you've got access to programming your own configurations of the mixing desk. So you can set up uh, a configuration that is just your strings, for example, uh, maybe with your strings buses as well, um, or whatever you want to put in there. I always break this up into different sections and that way I can easily see when I'm mixing uh, what exactly is going on in my subgroups and I can see what's going through and make sure that levels aren't peaking and things like that. So this is a really useful functionality. I use it all the time. Um, but this is now available to us direct from the front panel of the QCOM Pro X. By pressing that layer two button, you can now step through your configurations quite easily from the front panel. And you can see from the screen up here that this is also being replicated on your QCon itself. So if I've got everything up on my screen, then um, I'm going to have to step through to get to whatever I want to mix on. Say it's the strings. If I do this, all I've got now displayed on my QCon is the strings section that I've programmed into my mixing desk. So this really makes things a lot easier for you when you're trying to find elusive channels. If you've got, you know, 100 channels or something like that, this is a really good way to filter your channels down to exactly the things that you want to see. So thank you, Henry, for pointing that out. This is something that I'm using again and again. So a really good function. So after a, a month of using this new panel on a number of projects, what do I actually think? Well, uh, to be honest, I'm delighted. I have found it to be a really good upgrade, very intuitive to use. I'm finding functions that um, are really useful now that weren't necessarily available direct off that panel before. So uh, quite apart from the um, configurations of the mixer, which I, I think is a, a great additional uh, thing for me as a Cubase user, um, there's several functions which I've used again and again and again. Um, for instance, if I've got uh, a lot of solos set up, and I, I may well have done those direct from the buttons on the desk, but if you've got a lot of tracks, then scrolling up and, and down through it to find them all and take the solos off is, is quite time consuming. I, I did set up a function key for that, uh, but now we've got it direct from the desk. We can just turn off all our solos with a shift button and the solo button will take off all your mutes. So that again is a, a really good feature. Um, the shift save button, which gives you save a version, that was again something I had programmed into the function key so I found that to be a great thing to have that there constantly saving new versions because they use very little um, memory on your hard drive and it does mean that if you make a complete nads up of your mix at some stage you could go back to a previous version and maybe salvage things but I also find it useful when I'm doing um, tutorial videos to have different stages of the, of the project there that I can use. Um, so, so the shift button, which I whinged about a bit in the first video, I've not found to be 
as difficult as I thought it would be. Um, it used to be up here where the layer two button is, so for func shift functions was very easy. But I found I'm just using my thumb and, and a finger to get to there, and I haven't found that particularly onerous. Um, and in fact, a lot of the shift functions that I had programmed into these buttons anyway are now available off the main panel, so it hasn't really been a problem. I've had to program in my punch in onto F7 um, because that's gone. Um, but again, you know, that's the only function that I can find that, that isn't replicated in, in this layout. And one of the things that I've been using an awful lot is the edit button. I've found that a lot more intuitive to find now it used to be a bit buried and uh, this brings up your channel gives you access to insert sends the um, stock equalizer that's on your um, channel strip uh, which again you can use very comfortably um, with the EQ button here on the panel and I've done a video on that I might do an update video on that um, I tend to have the extended version. So if you just bring up your edit screen, you will probably um, see it looking like this. And you've got your uh, channel there uh, with access to, to mutes um, and your uh, your fader, etc. But if you click on, on this setup and click your output chain, that's what I tend to have set up. Um, that shows me where my channel is going to, which in, in this case is I have subgroups set up for the instruments. They go through to main buses and then finally to the stereo bus, which goes to the master. Anybody that's watched Chris Selim's videos on uh, Cubase will know this configuration well because it is the setup that he uses. And I've I've uh, taken that on board because it's a very intuitive way for me to work and, and mix. Um, I would thoroughly recommend uh, subscribing to his channel if you haven't done so already. Um, so anyway, that's that. And um, and also stepping back between the project and mixer window with these, I'm using um, again and again and again. I'm finding those really good um, to have where they are. Overall, just a really good intuitive layout. So I hope you found that useful. A um, little bit of extra functionality there that I hadn't found out about. And uh, thanks, Henry, again for that. Um, that's been something that I've used so much in this last month. So I'm glad you pointed that out. Shows the importance of putting comments into these videos because, you know, I don't know everything. Um, and it, it's, it's great to be able to share that information around. Um, if you're into like and subscribe, please do. Um, thumbs up is always appreciated just uh in these cold winter covid months it's nice to see a few thumbs up um, but don't feel you've got to subscribe if you've got plenty of other uh, videos that you've got to watch and hopefully i'll see you on the next one